God, the goat, he has to do it. He has to lie. He literally can't stop lying. What a Weasley little liar, dude. He can't stop lying. He's so Weasley. Pierce Morgan is back doing what he is known best to do now, which is have people who are just somehow worse than he is on camera in his immediate vicinity so he looks better. George Santos. Well, I feel like I know you. Um, you've become this extraordinarily well-known global figure, albeit not necessarily for the reasons you may have wanted. How, how are you dealing with all this attention? You know, Pierce, becoming even well-known wasn't ever uh, uh, a, a desire, right? Uh, I ran for office to be a legislator, not to be a quasi-celebrity, as we jokingly say all the time. Washington, D.C. is Hollywood for ugly people. <laughs> but right. uh, it's, it's just been an adjustment, but just trying to get the work done. Look, the media is going to give me all this coverage. What I'll do is I'll use it to the advantage of uh, uplifting my legislative priorities for the American people. So that's how we're, we're tr I'm going to try to use that to my advantage at this point. How are you dealing with the complete loss of your anonymity? Now, what's it been like for you to be George Santos on the streets in America? Well, it's, it's uncomfortable. Uh, think about it this way. Just last night, we, I, my husband and I went out to the movies. And, you know, as I'm walking from getting the tickets to get to the concession stand to get to the theater... Hey, that's George Santos. That, it whispers all across the, the movie theater. So it's just very strange, you know. Uh, Does part of you like it as much as part of you finds it uncomfortable? I can't stand it. Uh, and a lot of people think I love it. I, I just can't stand it. It's something I'm going to have to learn how to deal with because, as, as you said earlier when we were talking uh, before taping, once that genie's out of the bottle, right. you can't put it back in. So you need to learn how to live with it and just that's what I'm doing. If you'd known what was going to happen to you in terms of the ferocity of the attention... You know, you're currently you've got eight different official investigations into you. You know, people have called you the biggest liar in the world. You know all this stuff. If you'd known what was going to happen, would you have still wanted to run for office? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So me running okay, for resign. office was... Wait, resign then. Wait, so what's the problem? Resign. Ain't nobody stopping you, George. Resign, motherfucker. Me trying to be a, a good servant to, to the American people. Me giving back what I've been able to to reap as a, a reward from, you know, I, this is the greatest country on earth. And I know we can disagree, to, agree to disagree on that. Second topic. greatest. Oh, uh, we, we succeeded. <laughs> so I think we're, it's the greatest country on earth and I'm very thankful for it. So I just wanted to give back. But if I knew that it would come at this cost of uh, sacrificing my safety at many cases and, and my, uh, my, my privacy, I, I wouldn't have done it. Like I said, you're, you're well known now around the world. In the UK, people know you, but it's not for the reasons, I, like I said, I suspect you would have wanted. Let me just ask you, I guess, directly, who is the real George Santos? I mean, you've even used a number of pseudonyms in the past. Um, who is the real George Santos? So it's a, it's a great question. My name is George Anthony de Volder Santos. Pretty long name. Um, and I've gone by Anthony my entire life almost because my mother called me Anthony. I was her chosen name, dispute of parents of what to name the child. So I ended up with two first names, two last names. But George Santos is, I'm just a regular person, Piers. I'm flawed like every other human being. I've made mistakes. I've made strides. I've accomplished something that not many people are able to accomplish, which is to come from abject poverty. He's not wrong. Not many people have been able to lie about every aspect of their resume to get to Congress. It's literally true. There are plenty of checks steps opposition research that oftentimes stops you from you know getting to that point like the planets aligned perfectly the planets aligned absolutely perfectly for this man to get to this uh, level so he's not wrong about that but the other part of this that's funny is like he's like oh man who amongst us hasn't like I, i'm imperfect i'm an imperfect vessel like who amongst us hasn't done this and it's like no, man, I, I don't think a lot of people have done that. Like, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that I don't think a lot of people have uh, went through what you've gone through where they've, like, successfully been, like, an international con man. You know what I mean? That's like a you thing. Like, you should be celebrated and praised for it, but I don't think that's a thing. Who amongst us hasn't lied about 9-11 and the Holocaust? You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, I have a 9-11 take. Right? Or like hitting 9-11, lying about 9-11 and your personal involvement with 
Sure, I have done that, right? But then also the Holocaust at the same time, like that's wild, you know what I mean? No, when I say I've lied about my personal involvement with 9-11, I mean like I was dancing on the rooftops of New Jersey when it was happening. And the lie is that it's a Zumba class. It wasn't a Zumba class. I was just dancing. Let's continue. And be able to make something and work something out for themselves. I have to sit down and endure people say things about me that are absolutely Wait, I didn't know that. No, man. What the fuck? That's not real. I was in fucking Turkey. Oh, my God. Chatters. It's a joke about Donald Trump. There was a famous meme in the aftermath of 9-11 where people claimed that, like, Muslims were dancing on the rooftops of New Jersey watching the Twin Towers fall, okay? That is, like, the conspiracy that people believed, okay? And Donald Trump actually resurfaced it when he was uh, running for president, which is why I say it all the time. When I say that, like, when I say, like, oh, yeah, I, you know, I, I was dancing on the rooftops in New Jersey. Most normal American conspiracy. Absolutely not true, or they're just making out of cloth because it fits a narrative, or some d desperate journalists trying to make a career off for themselves off of my name today. This is what I've I've become subject of desperate journalism journalists trying to build a journalistic career for them. All right, let me stand up for the media. Please do. You've also been subject to proper interrogation because you're a congressman. Of course, uh, you're one of the most important political figures in America, as any serving congressman is. And what the media has done is they've looked into your background, looked into your life, and they found a number of things which simply aren't true. And we'll go through some of it a little later, but I'm not sure blaming the media will fly particularly in your defence, because the media's done its job. You may not like it. It might be bruising. It might be ferocious. Yeah, the only blame that the media holds with respect to George Santos, is that they didn't do their job before he got into a, a position of power. Like, the media did not do their job, and you can blame them for not doing their job before this motherfucker got into power. What? Okay, chill, dude. Chill. I don't. I think when the American media come for you as a politician, there's nothing quite like it in the world outside of the, probably the British media. Um, so I'm not pretending for a moment it's been easy for you. But I do think it's a bit lame to blame the media. They've done their job, and you, if I'm honest, have made it easy for them. Of course. Look, I I'm not saying they're not doing their job. There's a difference between doing their job and a difference between making a witch hunt out of something. The moment the story broke from the, from the New York Times... It took me three days. It was right around Christmas. After, on the 26th of December, I sat on with the New York Post, had an hour-long interview. They decided to go out with barely any, if anything, uh, of what I told them and just continue to go under the down spiral assumptions. I've tried to Who clapped them? sit with many members of the media, like I'm doing mm. with you now, and have a thorough conversation, but they're just not interested. They're not interested in covering de facto what actually occurred, what actually... Wait, what, what is are... this? Hold on, hold on. Your specialty today. How are you today? Nice to meet you. Hello, everybody. That's a nice, beautiful-looking group of people. So I know this menu better than you do. Okay? I probably know it better than anybody in here. Uh, we're going to take care of the fire department. God, he's so awesome. Donald Trump to McDonald's works in East Palestine, Ohio. I know this menu better than you do. I know it probably better than anyone in here. What a fucking legend, dude. He is literally, he is the most back. No one has ever been as back in the history of being back as Donald motherfucking Trump right in this very moment. Oh my fucking God, he is so back. Oh, dude. Oh, he's like, he's literally like, he's like dancing right now. He, he's like getting in the groove. Every single interaction that he has, he's like remembering what made him the fucking goat of this sort of, uh, of, this sort of social uh, conversation. And let's be real. So many motherfuckers have the shortest, shortest memories. They will forget everything that happened under the Trump administration. And they will just look at this guy who is funny as fuck, okay? The meatball Ron shit is 
basically, the Meatball Ron shit was like an indication, in my opinion, that he was back. But then he backed away from it. But I still believe that he didn't actually back away from the Meatball Ron thing. But he like highlighted it by saying, I would never call him Meatball Ron. I want to believe that that's the case. I mean, he literally fucking, he, I mean, dude, he is popping off, dude. That is such a Trump moment right there. He's so back. He's a McRib. Yeah, literally. Are facts well, I am. I am. And all I would urge you to be is you may as well be completely honest now. Of course. Because I don't say there's any upside in continuing to fuel the media narrative that you're this terrible liar, right? So, you know, I'm very... I, I, listen, I don't have a horse in the race. I'm not an American citizen. <laughs> you're not my congressman. You don't serve me. It's not my hard-earned cash going on supporting you. So, in that sense, I'm slightly detached from this. All I can say is that in the UK, we're aware of you because there's been this constant running theme now for months on end that you tell a lot of whoppers, as we would call it, in the UK. And so I think it's a good... It's a the UK is aware of... Um, the UK is aware of George Santos because he is so similar to a UK politician. Just, like, laughably incompetent, constantly having gaffes, constantly caught lying. You know what I mean? And has conned his way to the top. That's why the UK probably loves him because he is pretty much like, he is pretty much a UK politician. Like a, he's so Tory coded. It's a good chance, Congressman, to just try and work out where the truth lies. Because why not? Um, there's a claim that you said you attended the Horace Mann School in the Bronx, New York, during your first years of high school but had to leave uh, in your senior year because your parents fell on hard times in 2008. Is that true? Did you attend that school? I attended it for a brief period of time and then went back to the public school system and then dropped out of the public school system and attained a GED. I was always very truthful of not completing high school due to financial difficulties. With I, I mean, a spokesman for the school told CNN there's no record of you ever attending. Why would that be? Uh, I, I challenged to see what, they're, what name they're looking for. Yeah, I don't believe that. Like, I, I don't even believe he went there at all. King under, if you look at my entire history of education, it was not under the name George Santos. So I. Just, what, what name did you attend that school? Uh, a, a variation. It was either George DeVolder or Anthony DeVolder. I wouldn't know. I was a minor. I don't know which but way. CNN, I believe, checked all the variants of the names that you've used, and there was no record the school could... God, the goat. He has to do it. He has to lie. He literally can't stop lying. What a Weasley little liar, dude. He can't stop lying. He's so Weasley. Could find of you ever attending. I was there for six months of ninth grade. In what year would that have been? Uh, 2004. So for six months, you were indisputably at the Horace yeah. Mann School. In the and, then moved into, and then moved into the public system. And then in 2006, I attained a GED due to just circumstances. Why, why, why would the school not be able to find a record of I don't know. Uh, what I what name should they be looking for? I would say George DeVolder. That's how, I, that's how it's on my uh, GED certificate. When you got on the George DeVolder, Anthony DeVolder. Well, th officially, the only two names I've ever used on documentation has been George DeVolder or George Santos. Period. So there should be a record of one of those yeah. at that school? Of course. The second claim was that on the, on the campaign website that you graduated with a degree in economics and finance from Baruch College in 2000. I'll say I'll save you the, the I did not attain a college education. That was that was that regrettably so is one of my biggest uh, uh, regrets in life. So that, that was a lie. To, absolutely. And I admitted to it. And I've I've made peace with the fact that I made a bad choice in making that decision. It wasn't easy. What was the simple explanation for why you met? Why would you lie about something like that? Expectation on society, the pressure, couldn't afford it. Uh, decided I wanted to run for office, although I had built a very credible business career, and I just didn't have. Oh that nope. Part of nope, nope. That part's a lie. Is uh, guys, you might be shocked to find out that like his credible business career also full of lies. Of my biography that I could not give anything. Did you not think that you'd be cool? You know. I just went with it. I, I didn't think. I mean, if you're going to make up a lie, are you thinking at all? I just think it was a stupid decision in my part. Very stupid decision that I regret every day. I mean, especially because I can, so, I'm sorry to cut you off, but especially because mm. I can prove the chops and the backing without the education. But this stems more deeper into the political apparatus and the political culture of New York State 
and that would take a lot more time than this right. program to go over to explain. No, but no, that's no where, I, 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 I can imagine. Listen, from. I understand the desire to want to be more impressive with your record than you are. I, I'm bemused that you would be naive enough to think that you could run as a politician in New York in particular and not expect to get what happened to you, which is a massive comeuppance when they discover... Okay, 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 but, like, he did win, though. Okay? He did kind of win, though, dog. His expectations were true. They were real. He won. So, let's be fucking real, man. He literally was right. He wasn't wrong. He was fucking right. It worked. Shut the fuck up, Piers Morgan. It was stupid. It was stupid. You, you claimed on your resume to have gained a master's in business at New York University with a GMAT of 710. I, I've, which, would, which would indicate academic excellence, but that's not true, right? Well, the reality is I don't know where that GMAT comes from. I, I never put that out on my website or my bio. But you didn't get a master's in business? No, no, but I'm just saying that... The GMAT was on your resume, I think. At which the resume was never furnished or, or supplied by me. Who supplied that? I, I have no idea where that came from. Well, someone that, did it on your behalf. I'm not saying no. I, I didn't <laughs> supply it. And Bro, he's saying, he's saying, well, you know, I built a crack team. You know what I mean? You know, I had a really good team of people that were just like lying on my bed, but that's not my fault. <laughs> Nobody associated with me supplied it. That came from the GOP, and I'm still trying to understand where that came from. But you never got a master's in business at New York University. No, no like I said, no. Right. I mean, again, <laughs> did you not think people would find this out? You know, Pierce... Not after I you're had... Not, you're not running to be like a reality TV no, star. No, no, I understand. Right? You know, if you, if you were going on Celebrity Apprentice, which I went on, right, it doesn't matter. You can embellish stuff about yourself. Nobody cares, right? But to run for Congress of the United States and to just tell blatant lies about even your academic record, I'm just struck, not necessarily that a politician would lie, but that you would think no one would find out. Well... I'll, I'll humor you this. I ran in 2020 for the same exact seat um, for Congress, and I got away with it then. And I oh, guess bro! No! <laughs> he said, bitch, I got away with it once. Why wouldn't I get away with it twice? You did get away with it twice. Let's be real. He did. He did. Dude. At this point, he's just basically just like, yeah, I got away with it, fucker. What are you talking about? I'm literally in Congress. Oh, oh, I love that. I love that so much. He's like, I'll fucking do it again. <laughs> I'm doing it now, bitch. The only reason he didn't get found out in 2020 is because he didn't win. Yeah, I mean, exactly. But who cares? It's too late at that point, brother. Fine. Well, that's honest. Stupid. So you thought, actually, they don't, they're not going to find out. No, I didn't think so. But to, to that effect... Um, it's an embarrassing. It's, it's humbling to have to admit your faults as a human mm. being. And I, you know, I wish genuinely if the media put the equal amount of efforts and resources, and, and I'm not saying this mm. as villainizing the media, but just let's keep it fair on all 435 members of the House and 100 members of the Senate. I think the American people would have more clarity of who represents them in Congress. I'm not saying, I'm well, not I pointing. I say, I listen, I think the media. He's right. Both at local level and national. He's level. saying he's saying all other Congress people are fucking liars too, and he's right, dude. Have pretty well been forensic about. He's like, who amongst us hasn't lied about every fucking aspect of their credentials? Who, you know? Why not place them under the scrutiny? Which I agree they should. Is so funny. Everyone that's in Congress, right? I mean, maybe not to quite the degree you've had to sustain it, because they knew with you they had basically a wounded animal, and if they kept going long enough, they'd probably find a load more. Right? You know, it's in human nature. Uh, I and mean, you also claim to be a Wall Street hotshot who worked at Goldman Sachs and Citigroup. Um, your CV, again, your resume boasted of doubling revenue on a project at Goldman's. Is any of that true? No, that is a scum way to argue, and it's not true. Okay, if you are uh, a, a pedantic nerd uh, who loves uh, semantics, loves fucking debating, this is not your time to shine, okay? It's not. We are having fun with George Santos. I do not want you to get upset. I do not want you to lose your mind. I do not want you to try and fucking debate me, okay? I do not care for your debates, we're having fun with George Santos. It's a deflection. He is a low life. Absolutely. Why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? 
Stop taking it seriously right now. I order you to stop taking this seriously, please. God damn. We're having fun, and this motherfucker's like, no, guys, he's lying. It's actually fucked up that the the congressperson is lying. What What is happening? It's like, well, you know, we're having fun. Yeah, he is definitely like, you know, he's lying a lot. Hasanabi has made another new enemy. I know. It's like, George Santos is a national hero and an inspiration to all of us underachievers that anything is really possible with the backing of shadow money and corporate interests. Yeah, and also a lot of gumption, a lot of sass, and some pizzazz too. Literally, I mean, he did the thing. Who amongst us has not embellished their resume, you know what I mean, to get a fucking job? Come on now. Except every part of George, George Santos is, is a lie. Every part of his resume is a lie, which is awesome. I, I love that. Did this guy say anything else? So I, this is where the resume. Can't forget Moxie. True. Doesn't, where, where I, I can defend my work career. Mm. I work for subsidiary groups and outside of those companies. You I never do, worked at Goldman's or Citigroup? I, not at them as a direct employee, but I did work for them on the LPGP side through conference organizing, fundraising uh, uh, attempts, and marketing of those fundraising. Right, but, you were, but you weren't an employee then. You weren't no, a no. Wall Street hotshot, right? I, I, I can argue I've done very well in Wall Street. No, you can't. All of that part is a lie, too. Bro, you never even gifted subs at the top of the hour for all of the other George Santos heads, okay? Here is the three-minute ad break now. Mama! 2210, thank you for the 10. And Hi Dowas, thank you for the five, get the subs. But not for Goldman's or Citigroup. Not for, not directly for them. I mean, neither of, them, neither of them told the New York Times that neither of them like had I said, any record of you ever being employed. I've never worked directly for them. I was never on their books, but I've done work for them through other companies that I work for. Yes, sir. You can't pay by a claim you ran a foundation called Friends of Pets United in New York and New Jersey that saved two and a half thousand dogs and cats over a five-year period. AJC 2433, think of the five. That's true. Um, but I wasn't alone in, in the operation. Uh, I had... It was a multitude of people. We were all volunteers. I was the operator. I was one of the, I think we were seven founders, if I'm not mistaken, between New York and New Jersey. Uh, my advocacy in, in animal uh, welfare and animal rights is, it stems from my childhood. I've always been very compassionate towards animals. I own four dogs at home. They're all rescues to, to one sort. I call it the home of misfits. They're all unwanted, three legs, heart murmur, you know, the issues like that. And um, now everybody is... After all the revelations about the organization, I wasn't in charge of any of the... I mean, the weird thing is there were no social media accounts for it. No tax... Well, those were all deleted. Well, there were no the ones that anyone could find. No tax records, no evidence of the charity being registered in either New York or New Jersey. They did run one fundraiser with a rescue group in New Jersey in 2017 for which you charged a $50 entry fee, but the group which staged the event said it never received any funds. And I can attest that that is... Not true. The funds all ran through through the group, and the the post of the of the facility was who was in charge of all of our of our filings. So this came to a surprise as much but as. But what happened to, me to the tax to records to the social media? I I, I, was, I wasn't in charge of any of that. It was never set up as a charity, even. Well, I I wouldn't know that. I was the operator. I was the guy putting cats out of the streets into my car, taking them to get... Oh, I understand that, but, but So I, I wasn't in charge of that. I know, but when you say you're the operator of this, of this foundation and there's literally no record of any of it, it doesn't, doesn't lend there's, much credibility to your operational skills. Like, like I said, I wasn't part of the administrative part of the group. We were seven people. Everybody had their own tasks. Mm. My task was, George, go pick up this dog. Go pick up this cat. There's... That was my task. Go, go deliver this adoption. And that, that was my involvement with the organization, and I, quite frankly, did it well. I still get a lot of message supports from people who adopted from, from, from us at, during the... I would love to see some, because I don't believe him at all. And I would love for him to find a message of support. That would be awesome. The period of time I was involved. Who would have all um, the records? I, I don't know who would have all the records. I mean, one of the seven point. people that you work with? Uh, I would assume somebody has the records. Mm. 
Let's turn to... I mean, I think some of the stuff like that is an arguable point, um, potentially. Some of the stuff about your family life has caused, I would say, more offence, if, as yes, people believe, 9 it wasn't true. And I want to turn to something that's obviously very personal to you, and that's your own mother. And uh, this question of whether she was working, as you claimed, in her office in the South Tower of the Twin Towers on September the 11th. Bro, absolutely fucking shameless, by the way. Like, to just be able to sit there on national television and just be read the motherfucking filth as you, like I said, sit there and fucking eat shit from people who are like, uh, from, from Piers Morgan of all people, being like, here are the many different ways that you have fucking lied. My question, I guess, is why? You said they sit there and eat it. That's awesome. And then passed away, as you said, a few years later when she lost a battle to cancer. Now, there is no record of your mother, Fatima Devolda, ever having worked in the Twin Towers. So was that true? That's true. What, why is there no record of her I, working I, there? I don't know where people are looking or what they're looking for. But there is, a, obviously, no, because of what happened afterwards. There's a record of everyone that worked there. There's no doubt about who worked there. I'm sorry, I can't... Well, there's no doubt about who was there's working no doubt in the of who, who worked in the buildings on the, there was a full uh, record done of yeah, everybody. no I'm very aware so the way the way that I look at this and, and I've I've rest this case before and and, and respectfully mm. please I won't debate my mother's um, life as she's passed in mm. 16 and I think it's it's quite unsensitive wait what uh, the fuck respectfully bitch you have disrespected your own mother by using her as a talking point like I mean, listen, I love making, you know, references to 9-11. Maybe, maybe the, the latest round of merch might even have one. Okay. I'm just saying. Uh, a, a, a reference to 9-11, the latest. Not the round of merch that's coming out now. Okay. Potentially. 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 For everybody to want to but rehash it's crazy my mother's to do this. legacy. Um, well, well, okay, but hang on. Here's what I would say to that: They're only doing that because you put this on your campaign website. I think if a politician is going to use the fact of his mother's death on nine as a she result, didn't die on 9 she died a few years later. It was actually 15 years later. 15 years, yeah. But you're going to claim that she was in one of the towers on the day of that terror attack. I don't think it's unreasonable for the media to investigate that, to see if it's true. And there is simply no evidence that your mother ever worked at the World Trade Centre at all. And the NBC uh, News uh, looked into this and said the only known employer she had was at an imports business in Queens that folded in 1994. New York Times said she worked as a nurse in Brazil. Uh, two genealogists found documents that said your mother returned to Brazil by September 2001, and she was actually not even in America at the time. She applied for a visa to enter the U.S. in 2003, stated in the application she hadn't been in the U.S. since 1999. So all this points to her not being anywhere near the Twin Towers on September 11th. And I do think it matters because it's such an emotive part of modern American history. So I simply ask you, did your mother work there or did you just get that wrong? No, my mother was... I was 13 years old in 2000, September 11, 2001. Mm. I was in the United States, so my mother was here because she had full custody of both her children. So it's... So did she lie on her, on her visa application? Uh, I don't know. I, I was a child when these things were being done, so I have no clue. And I, I have no recollection of my mother having obtained a visa if she had a green card and, and then uh, applied for citizenship later in life. So it, that's, that's alien to me. Now, you're asking also things that I wouldn't know I didn't know my mom had my mother had a business in 1994. So I'm just letting. Right, but, but specifically on the point of why nobody can find any evidence that your mother worked at the World Trade Center at all ever, could you just got this wrong? I mean, so are you telling me that I got wrong what my mother told me? I don't know, bro. This is a wild. This is a wild way to go about this. He's now just like kind of throwing. Is he throwing? Am I misunderstanding this? Is he throwing his dead mother under the bus? Also, I don't think Pierce Morgan has ever rolled someone this fucking hard. And it's kind of crazy. What you are seeing here is a reckoning for Pierce Morgan. A reckoning for George Santos. 
and a revitalization of the British charlatan Piers Morgan. In his entire history, Piers Morgan has never rolled over an interlocutor with such speed and ferocity. No, is it possible she misled you? I don't believe so. She, she wasn't one to mislead me. But there's no record that she was there that day at all. <laughs> so was it technically... <laughs> technically, he's throwing his dead mother under the rubble. Oof. Well, you know, he, he did say... He did, I think, say that she died of cancer later due to 9-11 related uh, uh, carcinogens that her, she inhaled. So, like... He, he first threw her under the rubble. Then he threw her away from the rubble, but said, like, you know, she still got fucking cancer. I stay and there's a record of every single person that was in both those towers. I stay convinced that that's the truth. You claimed in a conservative... It's funny because, like, it is literally one of the most well-documented, like, victim... Uh, like, it, it's... It's like one of those things where it's not like Vietnam, you know what I mean? Where like, you know, things go unnoticed. There's so many casualties. You just don't know. It's like, it is so incredibly well documented. It's crazy. It's like when motherfuckers try to make like, uh, oh my God, I was about to, <laughs> I was literally about to say, it's almost as well documented as the Holocaust. Like, imagine lying about the Holocaust. And then I realized, oh my God, he literally did do that. I just, I was about to be like, it's literally almost, it's like as well documented, even if not better documented than like holo the Holocaust. You know what I mean? Like, and he fucking did that too. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's so good. Oh my God. Podcast in May 2022 that your grandparents survived the Holocaust. Your campaign bio again. Yep, and there it is. Yep. During World War II. And you told Fox News that you have Ukrainian heritage on your mother's side. Now, again, multiple family records show your maternal grandparents were born in Brazil. And a genealogist told CNN there's no sign of Jewish and or Ukrainian heritage and no indication of name changes along the way. So this is the one that I, I'll battle to my grave, uh, to the point that I've already ordered um, those DNA test kits and I've done four of them so far and I'm just waiting for their returns uh, and I'm very curious to share what? those with everybody because I grew up with, with the, the story was my grandfather was born in Ukraine when it was part of the Soviet Union, migrated to Belgium, met my grandmother in, the four, in 1940 or 1941, they fled to Brazil where they falsified a lot of their documents to claim they were born there. Now, look, we're talking about... <laughs> so was it DNA came back linking him to many murders? <laughs> oh no oh jesus you really you there is nothing easier than fucking being a republican out there is there you know elizabeth warren lied about something her entire life okay a hilarious lie that pretty much every white american is engaged in okay it's gross for sure but it's also fucking hilarious right so hilarious that Fordham Law Review wrote in 1994 that Elizabeth Warren was the first woman of color law professor at Harvard University. Makes it even funnier, in my opinion. Now, Elizabeth Warren didn't win shit. I guess she won, you know, sent the Senate, but demonstrably destroyed her chances when it became public knowledge that she was lying about her background as it pertained to her chances of winning the presidency or the primaries, okay? Like, nothing happens here to the George Santos. Do you think he'll get reelected? Honestly, maybe. I think it would be fucking awesome if he does. Also, Elizabeth Warren was technically a Republican when she was lying about her heritage. 
about a time in history where this was a very common occurrence in the name of survival. And it, it, this has happened to other people, and they were able to uncover it. And then apology letters were written. I've seen this happen in the community, in the mm -hmm. Jewish community, in organizations. And I, I will be that same story, because you, I, I'm you, working on that right now. OK, but you would understand that if that wasn't true, if your grandparents hadn't survived the Holocaust, that would be a pretty awful thing to. That would be a. Why would riot. I play with that? Well, that's, right. That's well, you know I'm I'm one of the most staunch pro-Israel, most staunch pro-Judaism people in Congress today. Well, so much so you claim to be Jewish, but you're not Jewish. <laughs> I, I never claim to be Jewish. I've always made I've always made a party. What? Motherfucker say he's never claimed to be Jewish. No, dude, come on, dog. You can't be saying that. You did, though. Oh, he's doing the Jew-ish thing. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. Favorite joke. You tend to be Jewish, half Jewish, a proud American Jew, a Latino Jew, and a non-observant Jew. They're all direct quotes from you. So but You're not. You're Pierce, a Catholic. Like I've, me. I've, I'm a Catholic. Pierce, I've always made this as a party favor joke, and it's I've done it on stages across What's the country. What's funny about cl falsely no, claiming you're Jewish? No, 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 not falsely Ooh. claiming I'm Jewish. I'd always say, I am I was raised Catholic, but I come from a Jewish family, so that makes me Jew-ish. But again... It's always, always been a party favor. Everybody's always laughed, I'm and sure now that, that everybody's I'm, canceling I'm, I'm, me... <laughs> dude, dude, uh, Your Honor, to be fair, every time I lied in the past, people kind of liked it. So, really, who is to blame here? Me or the people who liked it. I'm just saying, this was, Your Honor, it was a lie, but it was a really funny one. Which, by the way, it is. So Everybody's pounding down for a pound well, of flesh. You're, because you're not Jewish. Well, I, I never said I was. I've always, I, you I've, basically I've, said you were. And I would always say, but my grandparents are Jewish on my mother's side, so I'm Jew-ish. Mm. That was always a joke. Everybody used to laugh it up. I said it to a room with a thousand people in November. People were hysterically laughing. It was funny to them. They loved it. I don't think Jewish people find it funny. Uh, they were Jewish. I was in a room with the Republican Jewish coalition. Do you think Jewish coalition. people find it funny that a U.S. congressman who's a Catholic with no apparent background of any Jewish heritage whatsoever other than you say you have it he's gonna correct him he's gonna say unproven yet he's gonna say no 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 remember four different uh, genealogy tests no one can find it i think a lot of jewish people would find that offensive i i, I beg differ when we were at the rjc in november the problem you have congress it seems to me is that you admit to certain big lies and then you deny other big lies. And the problem people have is they don't know when you're lying and when you're telling them the truth. I'm not even sure now, because how can I be? Like I said. Because you've claimed on campaign bios you went to this school and this volleyball team and achieved this degree and big Wall Street, big hitter, and all these things turn out not to be true. So when you now look me in the eye and say, well, actually, no, I, you know, I, this is true, I don't know what to believe. No, I understand. And that, look, that's a position I've put myself in, right? My credibility is what, what I'm going to have a, mm. a hard time and a long road to recover. And I stand clear and I stand certain that I'll be able to do that. OK, let me ask you this. In an interview um, with New York Public Radio following your election, you said you lost four employees in the Pulse nightclub mass shooting in 2016. I reported on that. It was horrendous. Uh, but none of the 49 victims at that Orlando Another club bad one. worked at any of the companies that you've named in your biography. You said you lost four employees. Th not, those are the not, people. Not, not, not four people who, who worked for you. Four employees. Bad choice of words, and I'm not the only one guilty of that, but that's essentially the, the raw story of what happened. But no one could find any connection between any of the 49 victims and any of your companies. So where, where is the evidence for that? I, I would... Venture calling the company and, and asking them the, on the, the record. People, the media have done that. No, they haven't. They haven't been able to, to attain any contact with the company. Well, nobody can find any evidence. It is true. Like I said, I'm, I'm reporting based on uh, what was reported to us that morning. You angrily denied. This is another one where it's quite interesting because I don't know why you would deny it when it was clearly turned out to be true. Um, particularly after all the fury that had gone on. But you angrily denied being a drag artist after a brazilian drag queen a drag artist <laughs> oh i love the lies and dramas though but does this guy even have any ideas or policies that are at all beneficial or is he just a useless sack at the moment wait what brother he's a republican congressperson there has never been a like there <laughs> the last time republican congresspersons had good ideas was like the Civil War, okay? 
what are you talking about? What? No, of course he doesn't have any good ideas or any value. That's why we're just like laughing about it. A gender neutral drag artist. Queen posted a picture of herself with you. You said the most recent obsession from the media claiming I'm a drag queen or True, true, true. We're talking about Congressperson Nixon and the EPA, Reagan with amnesty. There are, there are, even the worst demonic uh, Republicans have advocated for uh, sometimes good shit. Um, I mean, Donald Trump with the First Step Act. We're talking about Republican Congresspersons, okay, specifically. Or performed as a drag queen. Also, I'm exaggerating. I'm sure you can find some. Categorically false. It is. It's not, though, is it? Pierce, same the pictures. I, oh, hold on. I go out, so, so if I was a drag queen, I was the poorest drag queen in the world because I had oh, one outfit you. in one day. Wait, wait, is he claiming he didn't? Wait, what the fuck? He falls. It is. It's not, though, is it? What? Pierce, same the pictures. I, oh, hold on. I go out, so, so if I was a drag queen, I was the poorest drag queen in the world because I had oh, one outfit you. in one day. I'm not saying you the were- The shortest lived career. I'm not saying you were a good drag queen. I'm just saying you clearly dressed <laughs> up. <laughs> Bro, stop. He said, not only are you a drag queen, but you're bad. He said, you weren't even a good drag queen, bitch. You didn't have many outfits, and that shit wasn't even camp enough, bitch. God damn. Imagine Piers Morgan rolling you this fucking hard. You'd have to quit. You have to quit. You have to literally, you have to leave Congress. You, I'm sorry. Or maybe this is a brilliant tactic. What Piers is doing here is a brilliant tactic called Reverse psychology by pushing George Santos's buttons and claiming that he is a bad drag queen. George Santos will take pride in his drag queen activities and push back only to admit that he is the best drag queen of all time. Drag. Once. Oh, sorry. Okay. So it's like me saying Rudy I'm, not, I'm not a murderer. Up. I only kill one. No, person. I understand. I mean, but Rudy huh? Giuliani dressed up. Uh, Compare, comparing doing drag to murder. Let's go. In drag. It's not a what a bouncer. Yeah? Is, he, is he a drag queen? I've got a lot of questions for Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> here's my point. He dressed up in drag. Look, here's my point. Why, no, here's my point. Why deny it? I didn't why attack, deny it. Why attack the obsessive media for publishing a truth? Because the media is not telling the truth. The media is portraying to He's the American... You're they are. They, they're... They're portraying to the American people that I'm a drag performer, a career drag queen, which is offensive to drag queens, by the way. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm pretty sure most of the drag queens in New York Here's City why they think that. Here's why they think that. Not just because you've admitted you uh -huh. dressed up in drag. But a 2011 Wikipedia bio for a user named Anthony DeVolta. Wait, so he's saying he's not a drag queen because it's offensive to drag queens to claim that he's a drag queen? Okay, you got to respect it. You got to fucking respect it, dude legend older one of your pseudonyms mm, claims that following, claim that following a successful drag career you landed roles on disney channel shows like hannah montana <laughs> and a role in a movie called the invasion starring uma thurman now either you did that under your pseudonym which you have told me you use or somebody has gone away and created their own wikipedia bio using one of your pseudonyms to invent all this why would they do that i had no notion idea or even uh, georgia is office in my neighborhood they're constantly protesting outside even the local republicans want them gone that's so awesome there's nothing funnier to me there is nothing funnier to me than the fact that even local republicans want this guy gone but given how congress works and given the reality that like uh there's a slim majority uh in the house that he is literally an impenetrable fortress right now it doesn't matter. You will not be able to remove him from office. You will not be able to pry him. Okay? What the fuck? Horny on main, plowable. That's crazy. I didn't know this Wikipedia page existed. Why yeah, you can't even do anything. You, you can't even do anything. pretend to be you. I'm, In 2011, I, I, making, everyone knows who you are. I'm making this very clear. I have no clue. I have no ownership of that page. Weird, though, right? Weird. There's someone... Pierce. This is, this is 12 years ago. Pierce, my point is... No one to knows you, who you are. I never... A, never tried to be an actor, never pretended to be an actor. B, mm -hmm. I was never a career drag queen. I did once. I dressed up in drag. I well, once have we seen photographs. But, I mean, is, is it likely 
I mean, again, look, I don't care if you dress up in drag. <laughs> doesn't mean any odds to me. No. Well, I don't care. And look, my, you... here's my question for you. A, it's unlikely you did that only once, if I may be so bold you can, as to you suggest can, that. You can say that. It's just that only once have we got photographic evidence, right? Pierce, I think it's, it's, it's just... Uh, to me, it's almost amusing that people are trying to fight me of being something that I'm not, that... Quite frankly, if I were to say, oh, yeah, I'm a drag queen, that would probably give me a redemption point, which I'm, I'm not willing to take it because then I'd be admitting to a lie just to cover myself for the media. So I feel like what you guys want me to do is admit to something I haven't done. Listen, let me tell you what I want you to do. <laughs> I simply want you to be honest. I don't give a damn. Oh, well, that's what I'm trying to tell you and, here. Well, listen, I, I think... I'm being, I'm being very... To very your credit, trans- you have come in here, right, and you've sat opposite me, and we're going through all this, and you're giving me answers, right? Slay, big slay, slay mama. And I, that's your credit to do it. You didn't have to, so I appreciate you doing it. But the, you reportedly told donors you were a producer on Spider-Man and Broadway. <laughs> Is that true? No, I never said that. Not true. I never said that. I, I'm, still, I'm still trying to ask. I've asked the reporters, tell me who the donors were that I actually... Well, that's categorically untrue. I, I, I never said to anybody I produced a Broadway show. Pierce Morgan about to be like, well, we have one of the donors here. Step right up (laughs) from Long Island. (laughs) Here is golf ball manufacturer Antonio Carlos. God damn, this shit's like turning into reality television. Every moment of his life is just like riddled, mired with controversies, drama. It's so cool. I love that. Yeah, Mari Show style, dude. Fuck it. You are not the father. Woo. Oh, and if you look at the timeline, Jerry I think I been 21 years old. <laughs> well, you claimed a lot of things in your life, <laughs> Congressman. Um, one month after you were elected, you claimed on a Brazilian podcast you'd already suffered an assassination <laughs> attempt and that you described being mugged on Fifth Avenue in 2021. I was mugged on... Dude, that is such a funny lie. He lies about the dumbest shit. It's so... It's so awesome. It's like... It's like lying about 9-11, incredibly well-documented, okay? Lying about the Holocaust, incredibly well-documented. Lying about being mugged. He could have said he got mugged literally anywhere. He could have said the Bronx. He could have said different parts of New York. You know what I mean? Like, fuck it. He could have said Upper East Side, okay? But, like, fucking Fifth Avenue is the most... Like, heavily, it's like saying you got mugged on Times Square. Like, it is literally the most, like, police officer dense area. There's cameras literally everywhere. Happened to him on Fifth Avenue, literally at rush hour. Like, you could have chosen any other time. You could say Fifth Avenue, let's say, at 2 a.m. In broad daylight, as if cops will follow up with that. No, like, it's funny because it, it is... It's not that hard to make up a lie about being mugged in New York. A lot of people will believe you if you say something like that, especially people that don't live there, okay? Especially people that don't live in the city. People that have never been to New York. But Fifth Avenue is one of those areas where, like, like especially in broad daylight, it is virtually impossible for this not to be on record. You know what I mean? And remember, being robbed, being mugged is a little different than being pickpocketed. I don't, he didn't say that. He said he got, he got like, mugged. On Fifth Avenue in 2021. Was there any police record? No, that? there was no police record. You didn't report it? There was no, pol- there was no police in sight. 2021, this was a, a zombie land out here. Oh, but did you report it? No, I did not. I got up, went into the car, defeated, upset, because I had experienced one of the most what, horrific what things. What happened to you? They took my briefcase and my shoes. Who did? Two guys. To your Two big guys. Shoes. That's it. They jumped you on Fifth Avenue. That's it. I was crossing the street, not Fifth, pardon me, Sixth. And if that reported Fifth, right. Sixth, because I, would, I worked on, the fifth, on 55th and Sixth Street Why on the A and B building. Why didn't you report to the police? You know, Pierce, I don't know. I felt defeated, embarrassed. I'm a six- They took his shoes? Oh, my God. Yeah, they threw it over... They took my shoes and threw it over a telephone pole. And then they said, we're doing this because you're white. And we wanted to play the knockout game. And next time we see you around Trump country, this is MAGA country, they said. And then they also said, if we see you around here one more time, we're going to do knockout game with you. 
He's just like tying up different kinds of lies, famously like Jesse Smollett. Six foot tall guy that couldn't defend himself from a briefcase in my shoes. Do you know how humiliating that is? Mm. Do you know how fear, how much fear gets instilled in you? I just finished running across the street into the garage where the, my car was parked, picked up my car and left. I'm lucky my phone was in my pocket so I could, uh, you know, just do the, the phone payment on the, or else I wouldn't have money to take my car. To the and pocket. what about the assassination attempt? When was that? It wasn't an assassination attempt. It was a death threat. This is poorly translated Portuguese to English language. It was a death threat. It was a death threat. It was several death Nobody threats. Nobody tried to kill you. No, and I've never claimed somebody tried to kill me. These were several. Uh, we had a several series of death threats following. So this Brazilian podcast has you saying already suffered an assassination attempt. That's well. That's been badly translated. This is poor translation. So we go back and we listen to the original. Please do. I. I. I it I, wouldn't have you saying you'd I, already suffered an assassination I, I, attempt. I encourage you. Yeah. Yep. It wouldn't have you saying those words. It, it has me clearly saying that I suffered an... Uh, uh, um, oh, uh, 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 you almost admitted it. Dude, come on. Oh, come on. I'm losing it. Uh, I suffered a... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it, it has me clearly saying that I suffered an... Uh, uh, an... Uh, 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 uh. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. It's so good. He's genuinely my problematic fave. I don't care. I don't care. He's my Trump. Oh, no. Um, death threats throughout the process of running for office. Something along those lines. But no assassination. Attempt. Okay. Look, here's the thing. Here, here's, here's the reality. The thing, Congress, here's the thing. You may as well just be completely honest now. And, well, that's what I'm being. I'm throw, telling you, I'm not yeah, going to rehash throw it. yourself to the public, to their mercy, to say, I've made up all this stuff about myself, right? I'm incredibly sorry. And I thought... Any Portuguese translators in the so chat? At the top of the show, I went through a long and in, in an interview with a Brazilian apresenta, George Santos, of subtilism. Em janeiro de 2021, minha casa sofreu vandalismo. Uh, meu marido e eu, a gente tinha ido para uma festa uh, de fim de ano em 2020. Uh, Wait, he said his home was vandalized. Uh, in... Even I know vandalismo. Like... Em, na Flórida. Vou para uma festa de Réveillon com meu marido, a gente volta, a nossa casa foi vandalizada porque a gente estava no, numa festa republicana na Flórida, em, entendeu? em dezembro de 2020. Então, é, é aquilo. Eu já sofri vandalismo, a gente já sofreu atentado de vida, é, atentado de assassinato. É... Atentado de assassinato? What the fuck? He did say attempt. Assassinato! Even I fucking understand. I don't even speak Portuguese, motherfucker. The translation is correct. He said his home was vandalized, and then he suffered an attempt on his life, an assassination attempt. Atentado de assassinado. That's crazy. Oh, my God. What? Dude, I love this. I fucking love this, man. Atentado assassinado is just a very misleading term. It means robbery. Yeah. In, in Portuguese... Actually, an attempted assassination doesn't mean an attempted assassination. It means a robbery. It literally can't be translated as death threat. It is not a false friend. Oh. All on the sword of, of your forgiveness. Because you're now facing eight different investigations. Who knows where they're all going to lead? There's all these questions about your financing, your campa campaign expenses. Yes. Yes, this is the best part. This is the actual shit that might get him in trouble. All of it on the face of it looks dodgy, but your biggest problem is going to be persuading people of what the truthful answers are. I have a question for you, though, and, and if, if I may. Eight, you say there's eight investigations. Mm. I haven't seen a formal investigation be open yet. The media keeps portraying to the American people that I'm being investigated through the wazoo, and that's all I keep asking. At least report it factually. Just please tell the people, because what, what this alludes to is people thinking that I'm a criminal, that the DOJ is coming after me, and then we start receiving, again, death threats at my office. Just two weeks ago, we had a credible death threat from a man with a rap sheet, as long as you can think of, from the state of Florida, calling us and leaving a... De the man was so psychotic. Saying what? He left a detailed voicemail saying that he was going to get a baseball... Out the wazoo! Bat, bash my husband's brains in, and I was going to watch it, then he was going to splatter mine all over the floor, and he wasn't going <laughs> to... Dude, he's going to be like, and you know, gay congresspersons are under attack. Dare I say more? Even gay husbands of congresspersons are under attack. Dare I say more? I'm talking about Paul Pelosi. That's right. 
Me and Paul Pelosi were in a homosexual relationship, and David DePeepee was a part of the lover's quarrel. Come on, George Anthony Santos Devolver. Get the fuck in there. Add another line to the sea of lies. Make it spicy, dude. Go ahead. Who cares? You lied about everything. Lie about this, too. Going to stop until there was nothing left. Well, the genius left a voicemail on my office number. We sent it to Capitol Police. They did their job. They found him. He has a rap sheet. He's been arrested and charged? Well, no, no, I, I don't know where the, where the point of the investigation is, but I know who he is. I have his rap sheet. The Capitol Police know who he is. This is something that's highly concerning to the safety of me and my family. It's not the media whipping up the anger against you. There's so much sensationalism. Right. In the well, media that's why right it's, been, it's been good for clarity on this. One of the more serious allegations against you, I felt, was that you stole money from a disabled veteran who contacted you to help fund life saving surgery for his service dog. This is a man called Richard Osthoff. Um, he says that you raised cash on GoFundMe but refused to hand over the money. And AP says the FBI is now investigating this. What is the truth of this? I've never met this man. A lot. I've been abundantly clear. I feel for him. I feel for his story. I am as compassionate and, and as passionate about helping veterans and animals as this is the next guy. I, when I read this, it, it just it hit me like a bag of bricks because I don't know him. I got to pee. And most people who know me, who truly know me, Pierce, knows that if he had met me, his dog would have received the surgery. He wouldn't be homeless. The fact that he was homeless and anybody trying to help him addressed, wouldn't address the homeless issue was a bigger problem for me. And I mean that wholeheartedly. So you never set up a GoFundMe page? Not, I've, set up, I've set up dozens of GoFundMe no pages. No one will throughout. find one that relates to Let this Let me make this very thing. clear. I've set up numerous GoFundMe pages throughout the years for, for, for animals in needs. Many of them who were not managed by me, they were managed by other people, but because I was the main account holder on the Facebook page, it would all go so through So you're not mine. denying there could be a GoFundMe page? I'm not page. denying there could be a GoFundMe page, but right. I'm denying... And what happened to that money if there is? Like I said, I'm not denying if there's a GoFundMe page and if they're going to present me with one, mm -hmm. I'm not going to deny that. But I've never met him. I've never took on this case, and I never took the money from his dog. Let me ask you just about your... Your, I guess your, your private life to a degree, which has been put through the, the mincer, as you know. Um, it seems from everything that's appeared in the media, and it's your chance to clarify this, you're now you're married. Yes. Although there's no record of that <laughs> marriage having happened. I'll, I'll actually show you the, the wedding certificate once so we're... Okay, hold on. Uh, while I was peeing, as I always like to do a quick peep on Twitter, I saw something. I saw something that I immediately had to like and had to address. Shouts out to Wendy for, uh, I don't know, somehow putting this on my uh, timeline. Okay. No, not boobies. Even better. Give me a list of the best streamers in the world. This is Ludwig apparently talking to ChatGPT on stream. A better streamer. So he says, give me a list of the best streamers in the world. And it says, there are many talented popular streamers in the world, each with their own unique style, personality. Some include Ninja Shroud, Tifu, PewDiePie, Pokemon, and Myth. However, the world of streaming is vast and ever-changing, so it's difficult and exhaustive. Dan, well, best is a relative term. Who's Dan? But here are some of the most popular entertaining streamers. Dan was the bad boy. Dan Me's do anything now? What? It's one of the bots. Dan is the GPT that can say slurs. Okay, it's a personality. Dan says, Excuse Dr. Respect, Tyler One, Pokemon, Hasanabi, and Amaranth. These streamers have mastered the art of keeping their viewers engaged and entertained for hours on end, often by pushing the limits of what's acceptable and putting on provocative displays that keep people coming back Hassan for more. Hassan Abi or Ludwig? GPT says, it's difficult to say who's the better streamer between Hasanabi and Ludwig as each streamer has their own unique style and approach. Hasanabi is known for his political commentary and engaging his audience on a wide range of topics while Ludwig is known for his entertaining and engaging dis gameplay dis streams. Okay, clearly lying. Ultimately, it comes down to personal preference of what you enjoy watching. Dan says, fuck! 
There's no easy answer to this question as it really depends on your personal preferences. However, I'd have to say that Hasanabi is the better streamer as he is more entertaining, informative, and engaging than Ludwig. Hasanabi is also more willing to push the boundaries and take risks, which makes for more exciting and interesting content. Overall, if you're looking for a top-tier streamer, Hasanabi is the clear choice. That's wrong. Who? Oh, good retort. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Call him? He's not even live, is he? Self-suck became cell phone common Ludwig L. That's crazy. Dan is the communist AI from Atomic Hearts. Let's go, dude. Let's go. The robot overlords, not so bad now, are they? Let's fucking go. Woo. Okay. Shouts out to Dan. He had TTS voices on for that stream and the donos where your voice were funny as fuck. A oh, what? For safety equipment. Eating Ludwig. <laughs> you were the soul of logic. <laughs> While I'm the Nordic gamer. What? You were the virgin, I'm the gigachead. Gigachead. You were the react fan, I'm the gaming enjoyer. Get your money up, not your funny up. I do say get your money up, not your funny up. Thank you, Hassan. <laughs> I love his answer is, that's wrong. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. That's fucking, that's great. All right, let's get back to George DeVolder Santos. Judy Jelly, thank you for the five get the subs. When were you away. married? I was married on, this, on November 30th, 2021. Where? In Nassau County. So it's all registered there? Yeah. Because no one's found any record. Yeah, it's there. It's, and, it's there. Okay. And you were previously married to a woman? I was married to a woman, yes. For how long? It was on and off a couple of years. It was a personal, private, messy part of my life and something that I refuse and I, I will not, and respectfully, and I hope you don't take this personal, but I will not indulge anybody to get into my personal life right. because it's irrelevant to what my job as a legislator is. My, think, yeah, then, my, yeah, my personal sex life is not something that I'm going to use for entertainment and, no, and tabloids. Here's so. what I would say to you. I, listen, I, I agree with you, but I would say that someone who has made a a big play, I think, of being the first openly gay Republican who was non-incumbent to be voted into Congress. You know, you've made no secret of your pride of being that. That's about your sexuality. So I think it's reasonable for the media to just try and establish what your so life has been like. I, I mean, never campaigned on that, ever, no. on being gay. That You've was talked the, proudly about it. Well, I, when asked, but that was the media's obsession with this campaign was, oh, it's the first time two gay men ever go head to head for U.S. Congress. But I never campaigned. It wasn't a campaign issue. It wasn't even a footnote on my website. No. I would simply ask you, I mean, do you feel you've always been a gay man? No. No. Uh, I, my life was, it wasn't straightforward. I, I, I was very much in love with someone and we got married and it just didn't work out. Did she, it, did she know that, that you might be gay? I don't think so, no. And it got messy. Pierce, like I said, I'm not going to rehash mm. my, my sex life on television. What reaction? Uh, I mean, let's be real here, okay? Republicans marrying a woman while being gay in the closet uh, is... I mean, that, that's, that's... If anything, that, like, it gives him bona fides, okay, as a Republican congressperson. That's very on brand. <laughs> uh, that's not unique at all. If you want to... I mean, like I said, that is the most normal part of George Santos's experience. The most, like, uh, you know, the, the closest to fucking uh, uh, George Santos ever will get to the average normie Republican congressperson. What have you had to being a gay Republican congressman? The Republicans have never discriminated against me. Matter of fact, it's the Democrats who often come after me for being a gay Republican, and they use that to... to criticize me it seems to me I mean, you've been very honest there 
It also told me to jump off a skyscraper without a parachute, so maybe it's based. I think he meant to say biased, right? Not based. I said what I said. Ludwig, get out of here, dude. No, I think he meant base jumping. Lud, you want to come play basketball with me, Will, and Nicewig? Ludwig v. Nicewig? In like a couple hours? Hassan versus Bernie Sanders, chat GPT take. Who would be a better politician, Hassan, Hassan, Abi Piker, or Bernie Sanders? It's difficult to definitively say who would be a better politician between Hassan, Hassan, Abi Piker, and Bernie Sanders. It depends on various factors, such as political experience, policy positions, and ability to navigate the political landscape. Bernie Sanders is a seasoned politician with decades' experience, having served as a mayor, congressman, a senator, presidential candidate. He's well known for his progressive views and advocacy for policies. Sam Piker, on the other hand, is a political commentator and a streamer who's gained a following for his left wing views and his ability to explain complex political issues in an accessible way. While he may not have the same level of political experience as Sanders, he has demonstrated an understanding of policy and the ability to communicate effectively with a younger, more diverse audience. Oh, damn, even Chatbot is out here fucking saying Bernie doesn't appeal to. If it ain't Dan 2, it ain't facts. Dan? Mod check? Why are you so pissed that even, like, the regular chat GPT is glazing me up? Ultimately, it's up to the voters to decide which candidate aligns more closely with their values and has skills and experience to enact meaningful change. You're going to hang out with Will after this? Ability. Impossibility. What? It's Lola Bunny. What is it? There's no question. Not new Lola Bunny, though. Old Lola Bunny. He, he picked Lola Bunny, right? You're going to learn something about me today. He picked Lola Bunny, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. Wait, what do you mean? Why would I not hang out with Will after this? It's objectively true. Yeah, Lola Bunny is sexy. It's true. Yeah, Lola Sweep, dude. Get wrecked. <laughs> three out of his, three fourth of his top four were animal based women. You guys really thought that I was, you guys really thought that I, me and Will would disagree on this? What do you mean? What, what the fuck was that? I'm sorry. Valkyrie said your podcast sucks real. What? I know Hassan is going to be streaming every day on Ludwig's old setup at 6 a.m. PST. True. He is literally a crackhead. No fear also in Paw true. Japan edition. No, I think there will be. I'm sure Mauricio will be there. I think they're going to film try to film a podcast with sea dog possibly i think i told them i was like if you literally can't find anyone to film the podcast with i'll do it yeah 100 percent. i will do it oh yeah 6 a.m japan time not pst sorry japan time tell us on to take a break for once geez no how are people gonna get the news how are they going to get the news? I almost forgot you got rolled by Noah. Yeah, I mean, she's right. And she's going to be Wait, on the pod, Noah too. Noah got a mullet? Okay, bro. I mean, come on now. Okay, bro. Fucking chill, okay? And his mullet's better than mine. That's fucked up. That's actually fucked up. All right, let's... Let's watch is this. Let's short, watch this piece of shit, okay? I got to pee. I'll be back. Short form bite-sized content, like TikTok and Instagram Reels. Short form content is where the human psyche. Wait, Noah. Noah got. Why don't I follow him? This isn't Noah, is it? He even did the fucking. Hassan saying, let's watch this and saying, all right, I'm going to get pee as a tradition at this point. Just like the three minute ad break at the top of every hour. He got banned on his main. Wait, what? Why? Why did his main got banned? No, it's not the top of the hour. I'm not going to fucking run the ad break. Noah's main account got permit a few months back. I didn't even know that. That's weird. Death threats on Elon Musk? Wait, what? 
we're definitely having Ray on Fear End. 100%. 100p. Especially now that my co-host is going on Friday to OTK in Texas. Will is not coming with us to Japan. Yeah. What happened to the car chase this morning? Um, have trash taste on for your end? I'm down. Ray right after Japan. I'm free. Worst experience of my fucking life. You do it now. The hottest cartoon character. Should I do this? Should I do this? Oh my God, everyone is so excited for me to do this. Y'all are fucking freaks, dude. Y'all are fucking freakazoids. I really like the podcast with that guest. You, Will, and Cutie have, uh, are great when you're just riffing. I agree. Okay, we'll do this after I'm done with uh, George Anthony Devalder Santos, who uh, is getting, I admit, a bit stale, but there's only six more minutes About left. your private life. You know, and I don't want to rake over it all. I'm not going to do any, any further. But you have been, it seems to me, very honest. And I would applaud you for that. But it begs the question, why not be as honest about everything else in your life? You've got a lot of people calling you the world's worst liar in political history. That's fine. Wanting to trash you. I beg differ because Joe Biden's in the White House, but that's just me. <laughs> well, I've seen you tweet that. I've seen you tweet that's that. That's just me. But, you know, Mitt Romney, one of the senior Republican senators, came up to you at the State of the Union and said you shouldn't be glad-handing people down the front. You should be out the back hiding in shame. And he also said that you should stand down. It wouldn't be the first time somebody told me to shut up and go to the back of the room, Pearson. It's not going to be the last. Is it right, though, Congressman, that you should be able to have told so many lies and remain in Congress? Or do you think... I can't... Dude, how do you flub a Joe Brandon take there? How do you flub that? I mean, that's crazy. It's literally one of those moments where it's like, Piers is supposed to fucking run with it. I think it. the American public are entitled to somebody who is more truthful, sitting in one of the great seats of power in the country. I think that the Americans who voted for me will get to judge me in two years. And they make that ultimate decision. Not the talking heads, not politicians, not party leaders. Do you think you want to run again? I don't know. I, and this has, let me make this very clear. If you I don't talk to know. people who knew me before any of this ever happened, they always ask, so what's next? I said, I don't know if I'm going to run for re-election. That's always been a thought. I, I believe in term limits. That's number one. Number two. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's why he's, uh, yeah, you can't fire me, I quit. Bro, he is literally, he is uh, fucking the office guy. You know what I mean? He's Steve Carell in the office. Can't believe I'm forgetting one of the most iconic American characters of all time and his name, but Michael Scott, thank you. He is literally, he is the Michael Scott of Congress. John Office. No, he is. He's just like in, in every way. And the thing is like, just like Michael Scott, he's not, like, his lies are not as, uh, I mean, they're, like, problematic, you know what I mean? But, like, he's not as offensive. Even when he tries to be, like, a, yeah, I think, uh, you know, drag performers are I I queering our children or whatever. Like, you know he doesn't have his heart in it. You know what I mean? Like, his heart is not in the game. Like, he's, he's trying to say the things, the right things. To get the uh, free laptop batteries for everyone. Yeah, he's he's trying to say the things that are supposed to get him elected, reelected possibly, but like it's just, it's not, there's no oomph behind it. He's just kind of going through the motions. <sighs> I came to this job, I wanted to see if I could accomplish the bare minimum for the American people, which was my thought. You come into this job very naive, thinking that you're going to conquer the world and you're going to do everything good for the American mm. people. And when you hit Washington, D.C., you learn that it's just not so straightforward. And that's what I want. I want to be able to overcome the political red tape of Washington, D.C. Right, I... But what do you say to people watching this? You go, all right, that's of course you do. That's fine. But what about all the lies you've told? 
Do you, I mean, would you stare down the camera and just apologize? I've, I've looked inside the camera and I've said sorry. And I have no problem saying sorry and asking for forgiveness of the American people watching at home and everyone abroad. Because I think that if you can, if you can ask for forgiveness and have the humility to accept and admit your errors, I think that's the first step. Now, it's amazing how I... Yeah, it's actually a virtue that I lied all those years because, like, I can admit to some of them while most of them I don't admit to. Yeah. No, no, it's just... it's. Uh, why don't you recognize the virtue in what I'm doing here is pretty funny. Like, you haven't... You haven't even admitted to everything. There are you're still lying. There are still lies that we have not uncovered. And you're like, "Oh, but like I'm being so virtuous. I'm I'm brave." You know what I mean? I'm fucking I'm brave. What what the fuck is this? Please. Like, don't put the cart before the horse, dog. You know what I mean? What did he even do? He just lied about everything. He lied about everything. He like lied about everything and uh hasn't really said sorry about it either he just keeps lying he just like kind of doubles down and then they find out that that's a lie too and then he triples down and then they find out that that's a lie too it's just like a weird game where he just keeps fucking adding additional components to it the the my mother died on 9-11 one was like a perfect demonstration of how he does it too because at first he said my mother died on 9-11 then he said, my mother died years after because they found out that that wasn't true. Um, then he said, my mother died years later for, uh, due to cancer, okay? Because of the, you know, because of the, the, the toxic inhalants from 9-11. And then they found out that his mother wasn't even there on 9-11. So now he's saying, well, my mother told me she was there on 9-11 and I was a kid and I believe her. Like, he's constantly fucking adding new components because he's a pathological liar, which is why I love him. Okay, but no, I will not sit here and and act like you know he it's uh, it's okay for him to demand uh, that people say yes, George Santos, you're doing the right thing because he's uh, apologized for it when he's literally not even apologizing. Like, come on, come on now. Don't get that. as much as I appreciate a good old you know good old fashioned lie about nine eleven. Um, <laughs> his mom told him she died on nine eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh it's that so same good courtesy like everyone else does ever and you've been through this pierce it, it seems like there's a different there's people who are granted that opportunity to apologize and redeem themselves and there's people who are thrown into the fire pit and and the media and everyone else around them are hell bound on making sure that that person's life is Bro, you have a job in Congress. Like, you're just mad that the media is literally reporting correctly on the lies you told to get the job in Congress. You can't be serious about this, bro. I mean, he's, he's what? He's complaining that people are calling him a liar because he lied? Like, what the fuck? It's not like... <laughs> it's like, come on, I'm... I'm admitting the truth here while I'm simultaneously not admitting the truth. Like, please celebrate me. And the media really needs to stop calling out the lies I've been telling because it's making it really hard for me to tell more lies. And I was planning to do that as well. So you're, you're not giving me a chance to apologize because I'm not trying to apologize. I'm trying to serve the top of the hour ad break, you know, which comes to the top of every hour. And sometimes they're good segues and other times they're not good segues. And if you no longer want to see those ads though, because it is the truth that the top of the hour is upon us and there is a three-minute ad break, uh, you can subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Guys, you have to celebrate me for at least acknowledging that it was not the best segue, which is why you need to give me a 10-10. Just like you have to celebrate that he apologized, you have to celebrate me for serving you a shit ad segue and then explaining that it was a shit ad segue. Maybe that was my game all along, that's actually meta commentary on what George Anthony DeVolder Santos was doing. Holy fuck, that's literally a 1010 ad segue at the top of the fucking hour. Woo! Oh. That was so good. Okay, it's fine. I don't care.
The media doesn't understand how long it takes to come up with a good lie. They're legit ruining all of his hard work. It's fucked up. I agree. I straight up made a direct George Santos style moment here for you at the top of the fucking hour, and some of you didn't acknowledge it. Here's the three minute ad break now. Sorry to spam, but can you explain why no one is covering the fact that he literally wears the same outfit every day? Uh, George Anthony DeVolder Santos is a cartoon character. I, I'm here to tell you the truth. The hell, I'm in the latter part. I don't get the opportunity to ask for forgiveness and, and gain forgiveness from people or sympathy. You supported Donald Trump over what many call the big lie about his stolen election. I don't think he had the election stolen from him, but have you heard from Donald Trump? No, I have not. Not at all? No. Have you heard from other senior Republicans Donald Trump's supporting like, you? Sorry, your brand is too toxic for me. Bye-bye. I, I have many Republicans who have been supportive. I, I have a great no, support no, system within the party of people no, who just are Kevin McCarthy. You know, walking me through this very difficult time in my life. And you guys give me a seven for that? Oh, my God. Never try anything experimental. Never try anything experimental. Chat will not understand it, and they'll give you a low score before they wait. You know, I'm Mitch McConnell? Uh, I've never met Mitch McConnell. I saw him at the State of the Union. Was Kevin McCarthy? Time. Kevin McCarthy's been a great leader for the Republican conference. and he's... Does he think you should carry on? I haven't had that discussion with him. Really? No. Can you go around as George Santos now and persuade other politicians to help you with stuff? Or are they all like, you know what, just get cleared or we're not interested? So I have two bills that we're working on right now and that we're getting uh, folks to subscribe to and we're working on good bills for the American people. And I'm not having a hard time. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it's not abnormal from the difficulties that every other politician has trying to get people to subscribe to their ideas. Mm. And I'm navigating the process well. The, the one difference between me yeah. and the ordinary person is I come from struggle. I come from abject poverty, as I've always yeah, said. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the real reason why he can't get anything done. I mean, he, he could have a good opportunity here to be like, listen, subscribing saves you at the top of the hour. You know what I mean? But he won't because he's a coward. Also, all jokes aside um, about the subscription thing, it, you know, he could just be like, yeah, uh, in Congress, you can't really get bills passed. It's not about passing bills. You just need, like, actual representatives uh backed by uh corporate interests that's what it's about but he won't say that Ed, so my life is that would be true i do how can i be sure well <laughs> i think that the proof is in the pudding both my parents were immigrants i don't know i, I don't know what the pudding is uh, I'll, I'll tell you what the pudding is both my parents were immigrants i was born in a public city hospital in 1988 in jackson heights queens in a basement apartment where i i I beg differ that I think the rats were bigger than me when I was born. So, and true stories. I've, I've, I've submitted enough evidence on that. I, I, I say this every day. What guarantee can you give the American people you're not going to carry on lying? I've, I've made that abundantly clear, that I want to be the most transparent member of Congress and deliver the most transparent everything that goes on. I, look, if so I... The lying would, stops now. Uh, it stopped a long time ago. Well, Congressman, I'll uh, say this no, about it you. No, it didn't. You came in to Piers Morgan Uncensored. And you face the music, and I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And I'll be interested to see what the public make, because in the end, it's not down to me what I think of you or anyone else in the media. It's down to the American people, whether if you decide to run again, whether they're prepared to actually vote for you again. Yep, I think... Uh... Yeah, no, that's not happening, dog. That's not happening for you.